Sometimes I wonder what the root of evil may be. It's not some recipe that can be crafted or formed to the perfect standard. Nor is it some abnormal infrequency that can only be observed every once in a lifetime. It's a very real and nasty thing. It is apparent in all beings, man and animal. In the observation of this, I don't believe that evil can be fully measured. I think sometimes we just are what we are. My name is Detective Bryson Lynch, or at least it used to be. I was relieved of my duties roughly three years back. They said I took my job too personally. Since then, I've taken to employing myself as a private investigator. I'm the guy someone calls when they know the law can't be trusted. In my 20 some odd years of doing this, there was one case in specific that stayed with me. One case that continues to haunt me in my dreams. One woman, one being, that never left me. Yeah, hello. This is Lynch. Yeah, yeah. I was just wondering if you noticed a crawl space behind the furnace in that cellar. Yeah. No, behind the furnace, there's just a crawl space. I was looking at the pictures. Did you guys notice that at all? No, no, you're okay. I can do it myself. Yeah, I can get it. Okay. All right, bye. As I entered the cellar, the stench of rot and decay still loomed over the room. The walls had been stained with the blood of the deceased.
As I continued looking around the room, I noticed the hole behind the furnace, where Mr. Lutz had been sitting in his chair. comes in the night to relieve me of my fright. If freedom is my desire, and blood she will require. The hair comes in the night to finally make things right. The hair. I knew that whatever Mr. Lutz had been hiding away was most likely not apparent to his daughter, but it was still something worth addressing. If anything, she would at least know of her father's previous whereabouts, or whether or not he had been actively showing signs of abnormal behavior. Good afternoon, ma'am. Sorry for randomly showing up like this. You one of the detectives? Detective Lynch, ma'am. No, thank you, ma'am. I won't be here long enough for any of that. I just had a few follow-on questions to ask you. I, I guess I'll start with the new questions first. Were you aware that there was an extra room in the basement of your father's cellar? A room that held instruments used to restrain and hold another person, as well as a cot and a chamber pot. Well, more of a bucket. Now, admittedly, I did have a hard time differentiating the door from the cellar's wall. But after a bit of looking, it did become quite obvious that it was a door. Did you know that I had a sister, Detective? I did not, ma'am. Well, a quiet life. A private life. Wouldn't you agree? When I was 15, we learned that my mother could no longer have kids. So my parents decided that adoption would be their best chance. They went to one of the local orphanages. Well, they went to several, if I'm being honest. It wasn't until their third visit that they had found Abigail. Abigail? <laughs> Little Abigail. My dad had quite a fondness for her. She had grown to such a strong, beautiful little girl. She loved drawing. Oh, and poetry too. She loved her rhymes and little creative quotes. Then one day she disappeared. Police helped us look for her for two weeks. After that, it was just father and I. I think I knew that he had given up. I could never give up on my sister, though. Days turned into weeks, which turned into months. I never
never found her. I came home one night, several years after, to find the light on in the basement. It was odd because those lights were never turned on. When I went down there, I noticed the god awful stench. In the back room, I'm assuming the same one that you stumbled across, I saw my father. He was talking to himself, or so I thought. He was leaning up against the wall, just talking to himself. I called his name, of course, and he snapped out of it. My father was not a good man. Well, why didn't you run or turn him in? Every night I entered that house, I feared for my life. If I had done anything out of the ordinary, he would have killed me. In the same way that I believe he killed Abigail. You see, Detective, I don't think she ever made it out of there. I think she's still in there, locked up, buried away, in that cold, dark abyss beneath the home's foundation. Mrs. Lutz, I also found this in your basement. After speaking with Mrs. Lutz, I knew that there was only one sure way to figure out whether there was any truth behind the matter. If I was going to face this thing head on, I would have to go to that house again. Miss Lutz, what are you doing here? My God. This is a crime scene. It was really you. He had you in here all of those years. All those years of searching. And you were right here. Look. We don't have much time. monster did to you. He's never gonna hurt you again. Sorry, Abigail. Let's go. Sorry, detective. I can't leave her again.
After my escape, the department dispatched officers to the scene. Susan and Abigail Lutz were both pronounced dead on arrival. However, it was seen that Abigail Lutz was with child. With great haste, the emergency responders were able to safely bird the child. During the escort of the deceased Lutz sisters, however, the two emergency responders in the vehicle were mauled and killed. The ambulance was found bloodied and abandoned off an old highway, leading to the town hospital. Abigail Lutz and her sister were both missing from the scene. Thank you.